<laughs> Hunter X Hunter episode 55. I'm so curious to see what Ahsoka does. Totally unfazed. Ooh, gotta pick your words so carefully. Digging that hole deeper. Huh? <laughs> What? <laughs> Does he have some kind of pact of his own? Allies X and X lies. Back and down. Or not. Fake out. He got moved. Yeah. His is so good at, at masking lies with truth, and truth with lies, and truth with truth, lies with lies. Hard to unravel, you never know. It's gotta be a packed thing for it to be believable, right? ]この攻撃の権という表現からさせるところ相手に何らかのルールを強いるものだろう俺に関する説明を一切するな but did Kurpika do that? If this is a, a lie gambit, this is genius. Krolo would go there, right, as, a, as an expert master Nen user. So I took a Nen quiz and I got Manipulator and reading about the personality type, it kind of kind of fits. I am very interested in manipulation. <laughs> there are a couple things that make Ahsoka such a great liar. One is that he's always the same. He's never rattled. He says almost everything the same way. He also hides his lies in honesty. Like he's unflinchingly honest in situations that other people would lie because he can back it up and he can protect himself and defend himself, fight, doesn't need to worry. So he, he makes truthful consent sessions that trick people into thinking he's overly honest, which masks the lie. Giving the paper is in a way a startlingly truthful confession within which he can mask some of the more damning details, especially by working the room. Knowing what people want to hear also is a big part of it. Understanding what they're looking for. Also not being overly explicit or forthcoming about details. A lot of bad liars, they over explain and it's also plausible. <laughs> Another great tactic I've witnessed, Ahsoka's not doing this, but gaslighting. <laughs> gaslighting the other person into thinking they're at fault for asking. Highly effective at times, used appropriately. Soko looking highly pleased with himself. Aroused even. <laughs> Swing. They've all just bought into it. This is plausible. There it is. Oh, I just went up and wrote that. God, he's, he's even more ahead than I thought. He actually wanted them to get this information. It wasn't a defensive maneuver, it was an offensive maneuver. Yeah, he knew his audience. That's kill Krolo. Who's the greater mind? There's a clue in there that they're not picking up on, which is that the fortunes contradict. Ooh, got played, son. One just wants to sink his teeth into them. Oh yeah, the game. <laughs> I forgot about that completely. I also was going for a second. Yeah, there's always auctioning. Antiques. I don't think he has one. I think his plan is to come up with a plan. Gohan's the type of person to just think in 100 percent, 100 percent. Okay, surprisingly reasonable. Game no game is totally I love this guy all over again. Look at their dating, right? Rupika's still a member of the Mafia. 
is a really key moment here. That's kind of true. <laughs> Not, no one really helped that much. And we're back in it. Say it out loud then. That, yeah, that's not an effective strategy against Gon. Kulu will feel like he has to go. And Kulu is in, and no surprise there. Wow, we're back in it. I was so curious to see how this would go down, because Kurapika had that crash, and, you know, I wasn't really sure how to read it. On the surface, it was the disappointment that he didn't get the chance to kill Krollo, but I felt like there was more, more to it than that. It's like a reckoning. When you fixate on something so heavily because there's a great pain, and you've identified, or you think you've identified a way in which that pain will be absolved, and you start gunning for that as hard as you can, no matter how terrible it is, because it kind of makes you feel like you're going somewhere. It, it soothes the pain. Like, motion is always great for any kind of spiritual agony, but when you get it or figure out you can't get it, you're left struggling to pick up the pieces, figure out where you are, and also the knowledge that you lost yourself a little bit. I'd argue it's extra horrible when you don't get it because then you compromise all of that. You went through that dark road, joined the mafia, what have you, for what? Which side note I think is why it's not good to compromise yourself because you've definitely lost something, but you may not gain anything. And even getting it is often not a gain, but a loss. Kurpika had a taste of that for a second because it was off the table. And so he was left looking at the eyes of his clansmen that he bit on, working for these lowlifes as a tool, far from home, far from his friends. It's a major crash, right? It's it's going back to having nothing, which is potentially the, the death part of death and rebirth. You know, you can be reborn into a, a better place having analyzed. But there is actually an increased risk that it will get worse should something else appear in front of you right at that moment. For him to find out now after that crash that Krolo is still alive could create a, a redoubling of that intensity because it hurts so bad to lose it and nothing meaningful or good has been built in the meantime. The only positive that emerged after that is reuniting with the crew. But like, Gon is not helping. Gon is enabling. And Kalua, I don't know, probably still with the chip on his shoulder about protecting and helping, seems to be acquiescing. And they are, you know, I don't know. But I guess the fortune's on our side. Happy to be included. That's not true. That's a huge responsibility. It sounds like he's going in alone. Yeah. Can you trust going to back down though when he needs to? That's the problem. That's what Glow's rejecting to. Half a second. Okay, that's a little more manageable. Asking a lot here, Kurapika. Actually asking a lot, giving their, their abilities. Yeah, that. Surprisingly level-headed from Gone. Including you two, huh? Is that how you really feel? No thanks. Okay. I'm out. <laughs> it's not for me. Peace. Oh, that's tough to walk away from. I would want to know. I'm not following. What you talking about? I wouldn't want to find out. It's getting even more complicated. We'll to catch up on. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't leave either. We also just couldn't, couldn't help ourselves. It's, it's no small thing that they're here. You know what? There's something really profound about that. I've had conversations with friends of mine because I'm, I'm very open about my life. Like, if you're my close friend, I tell you everything, even if it's super dark, even if like I did something terrible, I'll tell them. And I'd say for the most part, I'm pretty honest in videos too. I don't share everything, but like I share a lot of things that are embarrassing. And sometimes I get the advice to share less, like 
maybe this is incriminating. Maybe this story can be pieced back to something or someone that would uh, work to my detriment. Maybe I'll be betrayed or something like that. But I really feel like the risk of that kind of thing of betrayal, especially betrayal of information, it depends largely on where you are about yourself and your own information. Like the things I share, even if I think they're not great, even if I think I did something wrong. In sharing it, it's very likely that I have a certain level of confidence in the place I'm at about the fact that it happened. Meaning I trust myself that I'm dealing with it to the level I need to deal with it, that I'm looking at it to the level I need to look at it. And so there's no way people can really hurt me in any way greater than that means, if that makes sense. Any kind of betrayal would expose other people and their traits and to me, make them look worse than I would in that situation because I feel grounded in where I am. Not true for all things, but typically for the things that I share. If you are in a solid place about where you are, who you are, what you've done, even if you're not proud of that thing, you're more resilient to the perceptions of others and the ways other people might try to hurt you. To give a very, very low stakes example, someone just sent me a, a video about like girls saying they would never date someone who doesn't have an iPhone. And it's like, I have no insecurity about whatever phone I use. It doesn't matter. To meet those people, I, I would be like thrilled to know I'm disqualified by them, if that makes sense, because it's not an insecurity of mine. I think a good litmus test is if you have the compulsion or you feel a little bit of a, a push to lie, it means there's something you haven't squared away about it, or haven't squared away about yourself. The stakes are a lot higher for Kurapika with this, with, with these secrets, but it's almost like there would be no shame in it. There would be no, no nothing wrong in it by being betrayed after this showing of goodness. Like the showing of goodness is the point in itself. It's who Kurapika wants to be and that's easier to like square away and feel good about. Yeah. They also wouldn't. I don't know about Lyria or not. <laughs> Lyria wouldn't either. Well, live up to the standard then. <laughs> they feel closer than ever. I think it's mission accomplished for that conversation. Why don't I feel like Kalua's gonna do a little bit extra on this too? He's setting out to do intel or something. Oh god, I feel like this is a logic puzzle. It's like uh, Einstein's houses. The man in the house, blue house, smokes Dunhill. <laughs> the man who smokes Palmel owns a fish. What are you? Oh yeah, he didn't meet them. Yeah, Nobunaga loved them. Kuro is also a very interesting leader. He just gets more and more intriguing. Initially, I thought he, he was like ruling by fear, but it's a lot more. I've got bigger worries right now, though. Let's go look at a little bit too pleased with himself right now. What are you? Yeah, he's doing something. Can't sit still this kid. He didn't just walk into the trap, did he? He didn't just walk into the trap, did he? He's looking at the trap, right? They just roll right into this, just right into the action. Wasting no time, just going for it. I guess they don't have enough time. He's a torture one. Got some competition for the game. He definitely has 6 billion at his disposal. All right, so about Kurapika, I think I said at one point that there are ways they could pursue the Phantom Troop that would feel better than what we saw from Kurapika earlier. The just sheer rage and compulsion with the knowledge or suspicion that happens to be correct that they would be going after Gon and maybe Kalua. It makes a lot more logistical sense and I don't really have an issue with them fighting the Phantom Troop aside from the massive risk, but I guess it already feels qualitatively different from Kurapika's angle. He seems a lot more calm, level-headed, grounded to something more, like stripped of the loneliness and just the pure rage. That was a really great moment of warmth and camaraderie between the four of them. It feels high higher and more pulling, more possessing than what we were seeing of him before. Doesn't mean there's no danger here. Doesn't mean the obsession isn't there, but it's kind of a sigh of relief for me to see this scene, see this episode, because now the danger is the fight itself. It's the task. It's not like the soul, at least not as much as before, I think. Meanwhile, everything coming up is Soka. <laughs> exactly what he wanted. He's just sitting around swinging. 